Hey there, folks. Welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today, we're going to be finally talking about the newest full-length debut album from Boogie, Everything's for Sale. So I'll admit, I was a little bit surprised with how much hype this project was getting. And to explain why, we need to talk a little bit about hype cycles. I mentioned this before, but when an artist gets a single or a project with some momentum and popular support, ideally the label signing or backing them wants to have a project waiting in the wings to truly take off. Best capitalize on that fleeting attention and momentum. And about three years back, it seemed like Compton MC Boogie was one of those guys. Three reasonably well-received mixtapes that showed a progression of improvement, a lot of really good bars, some surprisingly well-structured melodies, and content that was at least trying to be a little bit introspective. It would seem like any major label could capitalize on the attention and make a killing pushing him, especially given how Trap was moving in the next couple of years in a more melodic direction. So perhaps it was the worst possible luck that Bookie signed to Shady Records and Interscope, which if we've been observing the career path of nearly every act under them from the past decade, seems to have a really bad habit of not being able to kickstart any real momentum. And that's before you consider the increasingly questionable Eminem factor of the past couple of years. And if I was Boogie, I would be furious about how despite his last mixtape coming out in 2016, we're only getting the full album now, in January of 2019, with a lot of the conversation seemingly monopolized by Eminem putting out one of his most humiliating verses yet. So yeah, on some level, I kind of wanted to give this a proper review if only to change the name narrative a little bit, give a promising talent some insight that his label seems to be fumbling epically, so what do we get from Everything's For Sale? So here's the thing. I get the feeling that with every listen to Everything's For Sale that I want to like this more than I actually do. Because I do hear some of the progression from the mixtapes and in terms of showcasing some maturity and nuance, Boogie is on the right path. That being said, I'd still argue that Everything For Sale isn't quite great yet, showing some rough edges that are a little bit shocking given the extended development time, especially given that it clocks under 40 minutes. It's a good listen, for sure, I generally enjoyed it, but I'm unable to escape the feeling that that this should be a great album, and I'm a little annoyed that it's not. And here's the thing, it's kind of tough to precisely pin down why that's the case. So let's start with Boogie himself. Now, I'll freely admit that when Shady signed him, that was a little out of left field. Sure, he can rap pretty damn well when he wanted to, and he had a knack for storytelling and wit that I knew Shady would probably appreciate, but he was also a little bit more melodic, and he chose to push his more nasal singing voice in a way that felt reminiscent of J. Cole or Chance the Rapper, but not not quite as effective as of yet. And to Boogie's credit, it rarely proved to be an issue for him. While there are moments that indulge a little more in some pitch correction and auto-tune, his slightly rougher timbre keeps the homegrown intimacy, which was, I've always liked about his projects, a lane in which he's definitely grown more comfortable. And more to the point, he can sell his hangdog depression with a gravity that never feels oversold, which can be a really tough line to walk these days amidst a lot of drippy emo rap material that doesn't have the writing or the presence to match, and Boogie's got most of that. Hell, it almost makes you wish he had more peers on this project who were able to match him in that lane. And on certain songs, he absolutely does. While I wish that Snow Allegra had given a little bit more of a verse on time just beyond the outro, I really do think she serves as a good counterpoint to balancing up that song's narrative. And Black's verse to end off Skydive 2 against the brittle acoustics sounds genuinely great. And when it comes to actual rappers here, well, J.I.D. shows up to absolutely steal the show on Soho which might be part of the problem with Boogie's presence on this album overall, in that he doesn't consistently project intensity. And while that can kind of work on his more low-key solo joints, at least the cases where J.I.D. can slide in so effectively and take over the song. Or on the flip side, allow Eminem to drop some of the corniest double entendres and worst ad-libs I've heard in recent years, as well as a chronic inability to stop talking about rape. You need to fix that, M. But whatever, Eminem's taking over too much attention from Boogie already, so let's circle back to the one element that does a lot of heavy lifting on this album, the production. Now, I've already highlighted Boogie's got a very keen ear for melody, and that's just as true with the selection of beats and tunes behind this album. And the generally smooth feel overall allows him to execute a fair number of sharp pivots pretty effectively. Hell, he leads off the angsty, exhausted moments on tired reflections with a gunshot that never fails to surprise me every time before we get the watery guitars, the pianos, and the unsteady skitter of the percussion as he meanders through a lot of passive-aggressive self-hatred 
100. And that's kind of tough to do against that sort of production and make it work. And it's a watery palette of West Coast inspired tones that does a lot of heavy lifting. And you hear it reflected in the guitar line behind the spare, scratchy beats of Swap Meet and Time, both of which honestly might be a little bit more grainy than they should be. Then you had the burbling keys of Lol Shake My Head interlude, and the chimes accented the low groove of Live 95. And maybe I'm just a sucker for those horns and the ugly argument of whose fault, but off the piano and the dense skitter of the hi-hats, that trumpet work by Christian Scott Atunde Ajua, it's phenomenal. But on the flip side, for as much as this album can sink into some of those slinky vibes, the attempts to turn up, they feel kind of half-hearted and almost intentionally unconvincing. Which, yeah, might be true about self-destruction, but it's a little less excusable for the contorted words of Soho, or the sloppy attempt at bombast on rainy days that makes the mistake of putting Boogie's voice a little bit too far back in the mix. And even Silent Ride, which is a solid enough melody, but could afford to knock a little bit harder against some of those woodwinds. But all of this highlights a larger issue with the album as a whole, in that so many of these compositions feel oddly abbreviated and a little bit short. Give some of these a bridge or maybe another verse, and I think some of these would hit harder as fully composed songs. I mean, he's got the space to do so. Again, the album comes in under 40 minutes. But all right, I like a lot of the production. I like Boogie as a talent, so is the issue more of the content? Well, I don't know, not quite. In comparison to his mixtapes, he's proven a little bit more introspective surrounding the messy relationships in his life and his own personal appetites when it comes to girls, which when paired with the generally depressive feel of the album shows, he's not giving himself a pass. Hell, as shown on songs like Tired Reflections, No Warnings, The Frustration on Soho, and the messy storytelling of Lol Shake My Head interlude and Whose Fault, it's clear he often paints himself as his own worst enemy. And his verses where he tries to speak directly to black men struggling with that same insecurity, even in the face of a come up right now, that's got some real power behind it. And this introspection and depression can lend both skydive songs some potency too. The former in asking for a little bit more time to be sure of the relationship, and the latter just asking for more time on this earth, period. And that adds weight to the closing song, Time As Well, where both partners are just using each other for cheap satisfaction, but there is a comfort and emotional honesty in it that does feel real and is valid. But at the same time, when you pair this subject matter with this production and delivery that's trying to be a little more sensual, there are definitely points where pettiness and toxicity can bleed through almost unintentionally. And while Boogie's gotten better with his references to social media on this project, there's still enough here to show that he's not quite going to hold himself all that accountable for all his vices. I'm reminded of what I said in my last album review of Bring Me the Horizon, and that just because you are self-aware of your bad tendencies and are lambasting yourself for it, doesn't mean you should romanticize them in the framing. And then production on songs like Live 95 and Swap Me can definitely come close to that territory. And then there are the stabs at self-awareness, like on Self-Destruction, which tries to be a deconstruction and then satire of that brand of trap songs. And I mean, it's not a bad idea, but it does feel a little bit dated, and I think that Boogie could have landed a few more punches with it, especially as he does show enough familiarity with how that sound works. And again, I've been hearing this going back at least five years. I know he could have done this a little better. But as a whole, yeah, I like this album, and I really hope this album can get attention beyond just a verse that I shall not name. Boogie's got a great ear for production, his thoughtfulness and nuance has grown since the mixtapes, and while I think a little bit more refinement and attention to framing and presence could have made this a great project, I still think it's pretty damn good all the same. And for me, I'm thinking a very light 7 out of 10 and a recommendation, but more for the pieces that work in a very dark, depressive vibe than those that don't. And while I'm not sure that Shady will be the best fit for Boogie going forward. Funnily enough, I think that he'd probably be a good fit for Dreamville if he's looking for options, and I don't typically like a lot of stuff coming off that label, but that's a different conversation. But yeah, Boogie's got promise. Check this out. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. I'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. I know, I kind of tried to avoid a lot of the verse that shall not be named, but yeah, beyond that, you want to check out the album. If you want to actually buy or stream it, links down there below. And I got the poll up there. I'm curious where people are going to fall in this beyond just that verse. But hey, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. And if you guys actually want to support this channel, link to my Patreon is right over there, where I'm still doing some work trying to rejigger what is actually going to be offered on that channel. But hey, stay tuned. There could be some interesting things coming. But till then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.